to the last session of today, the valedictory session. It is with immense pleasure that we welcome our chief guest for the valedictory session, Dr. Abhijit Gangopadhyay, sir. Dr. Abhijit, sir. Dr. Abhijit, sir, is currently the Dean and Professor of Human Resource Organizational Behavior at Aegis Institute of Business. He has more than four decades of experience in management education. He has been associated with various leading academic institutions. He was a Professor and Dean at School of Management and Labor Studies, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. He was also the founding dean of Indian Institute of Management, Indore. We are immensely delighted by your presence, sir. I now request our registrar, Dr. Anil G. Veryat, sir, to kindly felicitate our chief guest for the valedictory session with a memento as a token of respect. <laughs> I request the chief guest to please illuminate us with your thoughts. some delegates also, some students also, because my uh, perspective on human rights violation as a teacher was, I never used to get my students in any conference, in any colloquium, in any, <laughs> any uh, expert uh, uh, speakers. So I presume that this is, a, this is your creating a different culture. Really, I was, I was very worried. Be it an IIM, be it an XLRI, be it an <laughs> uh, Tata Institute, students is, will never come for learning, for any attending any session. Because they will, they only attend where they get a job. And it was a clear case of human rights violation for the teachers. Because we had a, <laughs> by mistake in one, in uh, one institute, we have created an endowment for one of the legendary professors and created the oration lecture. You, you won't believe the memorial lecture. There was not even a single student, faculty used to come. More important is, I, what I have learned in my life, that in academic world, it's very difficult to meet. I worked in IIMs, I worked in XLRI, I worked in Tata Institute. If, I, if anybody calls on a faculty meeting, and if they have 100 excuses not to come. And I feel I have a very simplistic definition of uh, human rights. My assumption is that human rights is essentially respecting others. And if you don't do that, we never talk about human rights in North Korea. No? <laughs> we won't be doing it. Looking at Mr. Kim, President Kim, I'm happy that I'm in India. If I would have done, I think I would have been state, the order is there, shoot at sight. Uh, this is what exactly the violation in terms of human rights could mean. We are in a very great world. I think let me put me a perspective so that you can, I, you can relate with me. I am not what I am claiming because you don't have artificial intelligence rigorous training. I am basically a seasoned student of law. I have passed my solicitor's exam because that was my family business in Calcutta in High Court and I was, I had a rigorous training of 
a legendary uh, lawyers of Calcutta High Court, Supreme Court, in terms of passing that exam. Because I don't know how many of you are aware that I think as a student of National Law Institute University, you should be aware. My latest professor who has learned me human rights was Mr. Professor Balsara, who was a professor in the government law college here. And it was so amusing to learn. And there I found, he used to give all examples. So I am I mean, basically, but I am so frustrated by seeing this uh, uh, judicial system because people are very scared now. Because what is happening, nobody comes for protesting anything. And human relation, if I understand correctly, starts with the basic preamble that if I feel something, I should be able to tell. You won't believe that in the world in which we are living, the legal systems are so complicated. I have seen in my life that many of the CEOs or the promoters of the very large group, I, don't, I can't name it, is telling the, their managers, we are going, sir, we are going tomorrow for the final judgment in Supreme Court. Still you have time, he is telling. If you think that you are going to win, continue. If you think that you are not able to win, go for arbitration. And because if you are losing, then you understand we don't need you. Because this is the simple world in which things are to be understood. Say judicial, judicial decision making process ought to be, ought to be augmented. I have a very fellow colleague who is now a judge, sensational judge in Calcutta High Court. I don't know if you know that, he is my namesake, Obhijit Dhangupad. It's very interesting. He, he personally talks to me. I told him that I am going for, I was not knowing artificial intelligence and uh, um, in National Law University here. He says that, Hari Hari, what you are doing? You, you are straight and you are directly attacking lawyers <laughs> because they will lose their job. I said no. But he said that be careful because as a community we should try to put, protect them because they are the champion of human rights. You see, if lawyers are not there, then I can't name anybody. You can't, you, but you know all of them. No, it's very difficult. Even today, in terms of the media, we cannot go on and speak for ourselves. I'm so scared. I hardly go to my native place. That's the city of Calcutta. People say it's city of joy. Because every time I'm scared, my human rights will be violated. Now, here, there's an urgent need of inclusive policy pertaining to our judicial system. As I understand very clearly, that artificial intelligence is essentially going to aid to everybody. My dear friends, when you talk about justice, we only talk about giving, uh, protecting human rights. Because every litigant has a right. And if I understand, very simply, sophisticated. I was an ardent, uh, ardent student of uh, jurisprudence, and which was being taught to us by Professor Balsara. And I have understood one thing that if I cannot guarantee anything, then I have a problem. Because if I cannot talk openly, and then it's a problem. I, I entered into a government service, and then suddenly, very old story, you all know, very suddenly emergency was declared in the country. I'm not blaming anybody, but the way it made us scared, we really understood what is what was our right and how it is getting violated. Good. I have seen many legendary justice delivering very legendary judgments. But one thing is there, if it does not serve the bottom, bottom of the pyramid or the last mile, then what is the justice given? Justice is better to de get denied. Many people in this country are getting, de they are total denying mode in terms of the giving justice. So my request to you, and I think, I don't know, it's a wonderful uh, theme, and I wish I can uh, 
go on telling you all these things. But uh, please remember that justice has to be ensured. And there is nothing like that because we are not technology savvy. When I was working in a uh, solicitor firm in Calcutta, it was our own farm, my uh, family farm. Only job the farm, is, I think now I'm coming back from the individual to the farm and how it is violated. You see, customer, these clients are essentially are human beings. Organized, if it's an organizational uh, client and if it's an individual client. Now how we charge them? I think I have a spectacular success in billing the clients. We used to build the clients and I think if you are aware, I don't know how many of you are aware, the integrity in terms of the, in the our judicial system. You see, all forms, and you know the attorneys, solicitor, which has been abolished. Essentially, they used to be, they, and still it continues, because clients consider, just like a medical, I go to my medical uh, consult, consultant or medical uh, for my checkup, and what he does, I really can't understand. Because he looks at my uh, reports, clinical reports, and say that continue, come after uh, three months, after doing this test. That means, I think, he is not using the knowledge. Because I am very much sure that data generated for your healthcare, be it your fintech, be it your, be it your uh, every uh, dimensions, ought to be processed properly, say insurance sector. Now what is happening if you deny a right claim or if you pass a wrong claim, actually you are doing total violations of the basic principles of justice, which is nothing but human rights violation. And if you think, it's not an activism. See, please understand, and to, in, because most of the cases it's very, very discretion. If the discretion is taken away, so as a teacher, I think I have been in the interview panels. I was also a central government officer, central civil serviceman. Because most of the cases, I was in the board of UPSC for selecting central service officers. But I, what is the decision, what is the justice I have done? I used to feel guilty. Now, there was a time I had to say, I won't be coming to this process, it's meaningless. Because data generated, which is not processed. Now, say for example, my dear friend, I don't want to disturb you, but there is a singular approach. Say how the judgments are written, you know. And I have seen that judgments are written by the people, those who can, those who have better analytical skill. Judges, at some point of time, get so contradicted because their reputation is adversely affected. I don't blame them. It is not having a books. You must have seen all the years having lots of uh, all India labor reviews. But that is not going to help you because how you will dig out that material? Artificial intelligence or any technological tool. If you are using any uh, deep learning methods, if you are the text uh, NLP, reading NLP, you get a total insight of the, uh, of the entire process. And this makes the whole thing really structured. Say, I am, I feel that unless you are structured, you cannot deliver what you intend to deliver. And that is, there is a total violation. Say, for example, I will give you a very simple case. I have a car in Calcutta, which is never, never driven. I get number of challenge notices of traffic signal violations. Now I want to, I want CP, who happen to be my professionals, <laughs> whom I uh, taught them in the National Police Academy. And I was a professor in the National Police Academy. I asked them, give me the evidences. He said, Choro sir, we are paying it from our secret fund. Now is this a, is a total violation of human rights. No? If it happens to ask me, I think it's a 300 rupees by him. If I, because by that time the notice comes to me, three months already uh, it has over. So I have to go to court and pay lawyer 300 rupees more to deposit the fine with an enhanced rate, which is 500. My question is that, look, 
why it is happening? Because you are not giving data based. Say now the things are totally different. In Bombay, if you are in Mumbai, I am sorry. If you get, if I get a traffic signal violations, I have a high security number plate. Immediately things comes on my mobile. But now the, the question is that it can be stopped only by high security number plate. If you are a fancy number plate, where you write in your own way, what you write you only know. Nobody, <laughs> nobody understands the differences. So AI can play a very deep, critical role in terms of providing justice to all. It is not for it is it is a, and it will take away the guilt of people because no judge, no human being ever like to punish who is not guilty. I'm telling you honestly. Because everybody's interests are paramount to them. They are they are professionals, you know. Say all doctors would like to help the patient. Because when and but one thing is there. When the, uh, the Western analytics, medical analytics came, I thought that we are going to be away from doctors because the computer will decide my disease and uh, uh, suggest the uh, and a method of treatment. But it has not happened because my uh, I have my own daughter who is now a remote surgeon, a remote surgeon she, she does. Now she says we are only observing, but this observation is only when the remote processes fails. That time they have to interfere. For that, somebody is to be monitored. Now they are trying to modify it. It is again artificial intelligence driven, but that modifications obviously will take subsequent time because immediately case is referred. Safety standards is violated. You see, you imagine you are doing a pro intervention, and in either a needle or something gets struck. Now, how you, why it gets struck? I think it, has, it was not known. Out of thousand cases, two thousand cases, it has not happened. But in seven thousand one case, it, it got. So this is where exactly people's pro things are required. Lawyer will be lawyer task or lawyer law uh, agencies where there is a judge or a lawyer, their role will be enhanced by application of uh, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence never takes any job from anyone. So, for example, if you have totally uh, uh, AI driven cars, still you need somebody to monitor the deviations. You know, say we have the automatic landing systems in the uh, planes. But that has not taken care. Only thing is that what happened? If for flying <coughs> a small Dakota, we had a 12 team members to fly. Now, <coughs> most the biggest air, air, uh, aircraft is driven by two or three people. That too also because there is an exigency of the person, not because of the machines. But the learning, it is always a, uh, it takes over. On the case that this is a critical error, that time he intervenes. So the idea, my suggestion was either you put inter artificial intelligence modified with better lo 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 algorithm, or you keep a dog. If pilot does something immediately, he will bite. <laughs> That's also, it is also a very fine, super, superior form of, because he has been trained. You see, basically, what is it, artificial intelligence? You are training for uh, various variations. So that makes sense for all of us. So nobody will be redundant, things will be better, it will improve, it will add to decision, decision making, it will enhance the predictability. All these things are necessary coordinates or applications of artificial intelligence. And it will ensure ultimate objective is to provide human rights. Because everybody has a right to be protected. I think, say, for example, the model, ultimate model of human rights is still to be evolved. I think we are better because at least we are, we are free the way we can do anything. Say, for example, we never, we, can, we need not follow any traffic rules, we need not follow any <laughs> protocols. I think that's also that, but that freedom is infringing on others. That's a violation. Suppose you are driving and another person hits you, it's a problem. So idea is that let us have a discipline, but at the same time, respect others. So my way of looking at the things, that all this technology will be there, but respect for others. 
So what all you are seeing now? I think meta, meta was. It's very wonderful <coughs> tool, but at the same point of time you have to respect the people. So for example, somebody was jokingly telling that if you want to be successful billionaire in India, you have to have last three words of your surname should be Ani, Ambani, <laughs> Adhani, and which one? The Dimarts, great person. <laughs> Daman. So the idea is that no, it is basically everybody has his own unique way of analyzing things. But you said, say for example, giving discount is a wonderful thing. But Damanya, he understands. He is basically yes, his gut feeling says that people don't want deferred incentive; they want immediate incentive. So it is locked in such a way that when you purchase, so the many of the things which you are trying to resolve in true inter artificial intelligence, better analysis, whether it's Amazon, Amazon or eBay, but it can be resolved by analyzing the people's behavior. Why it is rejected? Why people go for delivery on <coughs> a product at after uh, uh, they were not pay before cash? It's a problem. So if you have a built-in mechanism of reversing, then it will not happen. So you have to develop a trust. So my clo I should like to close it that with this uh, thinking, because you have to think in terms of making it effective. Use artificial intelligence technique, all technology, and I think most of the IT technology tools are effective in terms of reducing. So for example, today fraud preventions. I think that's one of the objectives. Fraud preventions can be totally controlled if it cannot be eliminated. Because every day it is happening. So for example, last one month, this Mac OS has released four updates. Why? Every time they are getting vulnerable. And how they are getting to understand vulnerable, I don't tell them. I don't use anything other than that. They understand that these things are aberrations are taking place. I feel ashamed, you know, say when our health servers are hacked. Why such things happen? Because <coughs> it has to be, for servers have to be continuously protected. So cyber security experts should provide accurate anticipation for us so that our health data, say AIMS record, I don't know who has taken it, who has hacked it, I think, but it's a dangerous thing for a country. So my humble submission to you, let us, let us protect human rights. And your data is nothing but, respect for data is nothing but human rights uh, adherence. And if you can do that, it will be happening. Things are happening, I think. Today, judgments are totally uh, getting a lot of em emphasis because our legal system is based on other case laws. Na? And therefore, it is very uh, appropriate to have totally or total automation. And if you can do that, I think sky is our limit. With this, I'd like to really thank you because I could never imagine that such a topic would be, uh, I was, I, I was, uh, knowing this institute, I have never visited this. It is a wonderful way it has been structured. I think Mr. Bhupesh is also telling me that this room, I, we have done a number of seminars, but you have made it okay. This is a tribute to this National Law University. It is a wonderful way you are trying to analyze and trying to respect your uh, stakeholders. Your stakeholders are many. We are your stakeholders. Uh, students are your stakeholders, faculty is the stakeholders. With this, I'd like to thank all of you, and I feel really great in terms of at least it's a privilege for me to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for illuminating us with your thoughts. <laughs> You rightly pointed out on the fallacy in data processing and the blurred idea of justice and the importance of artificial intelligence in upholding the idea of justice. We definitely have a new perspective now of looking at human rights through the lens of respect. 
Due to the last minute exigencies, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Dilip Oke, could not join us today for the colloquium. However, he has supported us for the smooth facilitation of this colloquium. I request our Registrar, Professor Dr. Anil G. Veryat, sir, to deliver the special address and the vote of thanks to mark the end of this wonderful colloquium. Thank you, Mr. Sharia. <coughs> Good evening to all. Uh, most suspected Chief Guest of the Function, Professor Sigurdhubath here, and uh, Sri Bhupesh Jahariya, the CEO of AG's School of Data Science and Cyber Security. Other dignitaries and uh, participants, I know that the time is running out and you are in a hurry to go back to your uh, places. So I don't want to take much time. But today, <coughs> as you are aware, we, uh, the day coincides with the anniversary of adoption of the Universal Human Rights, wherein as a civilization we have recognized and formally instrumented, documented certain basic rights which shall govern us in all walks of our life, including the day-to-day -day administration of the nations. The very dashing and lighting discourse by Professor Angwadiya takes me to my school days, wherein I myself have experienced the violation of human rights, being a son of an emergency prisoner. One, one year before that, in 1974, there was a railway strike. All India railway strike, uh, probably uh, people on the dais may be knowing, and uh, those who are on the many of those who are on the audience may not be aware. My father was also a trade unionist, and uh, that was the time as a as a uh, young boy, I have seen how administration can be used to deny you your basic rights. The employees who were striking were suspended and. Uh, the government tried to evict forcefully the families from the government quarters because your employees no more in service of the railways. So I must say that that would have been perhaps my first, what do you say, encounter with the human right and human right violation. Now the days have changed. A lot of automation has taken place. The technology has advanced. Advancement of technology has brought in new generation rights and right related discourses and challenges to uh, human rights and a lot of conflict between uh, the administration and the rights and the, how it has been managed, all these things are there. So now the advancement of technology has its own merits as well as demerits. You know, things have become easy. Now you are not concerned about the timings of the bank. You are not you are not bothered whether the bank is working or not. Banking business hours is over or not. Because bank is at your, in your pockets. Payments are at your fingertips. And you need not stand in queue for reservations. Otherwise, there were, there were days where you had to go to the uh, railway uh, reservation counter one day prior and the entire night you spend there to get uh, and waiting uh, it will be opened on the next day morning at 8 o'clock so in every every field we have advanced a lot at the same time it has its own demerits interactions has come down personal touch has come down addiction to technology has come Anyhow, this is not the way, this is not the forum or occasion to deliberate upon the merits and demerits. We are concerned with the regulations and legal framework which should govern all these transactions. It is not that we don't have a law at place. Of course, there may be isolated or uh, laws there somewhere here and there. But a more comprehensive legal framework and regulation has to be, uh, ha have to come, it should be in place. And I am sure that we have the discussions, we had the brainstorm sessions, we had have helped us in having 
a lot of insight into this problem and I take this opportunity first to congratulate the postgraduate department here especially the head of the department uh, Dr. Anand Rao for taking a lead in this and also in his wisdom to collaborate with the AG's School of Data Science and Cyber Security which as an institution it has a lot of expertise in this field and I think that collaboration of these two institutions will definitely help uh, in, in furthering the cause. And I will, uh, without uh, further this thing, I will directly enter into my assigned task of proposing vote of thanks. Uh, the first of all, I have to express my thanks to our Honorable Vice Chancellor who had guided us and uh, supported us for all this program. Uh, I am standing here on his absence and on, on his behalf. My thanks to him. And we had uh, three technical sessions apart from the uh, inaugural and valedictory sessions. And the inaugural session, uh, Advocate Prashant Mali, who was who is uh, a very, very, you know, uh, celebrate, celebrated lawyer and uh, expert in cyber security. He had been with us and uh, we are also blessed with the special address by Sri Bhubesh the area and he also took a session in the, in the uh, I think in the second uh, technical session on uh, human rights and uh, artificial intelligence. And I thank both of them for their contribution. In the first session, we had Mr. Jayan Rajurkar, Mr. Anu Tibari, and uh, of course Professor Edgar would not join, but he was uh, due to uh, last minute difficulties, he could not join. So my sincere thanks on behalf of uh, Maharashtra National University family and on all your behalf is due to uh, Mr. Jayant Rajurkar and Anutivari for their contribution. And again in the second session, uh, Satyogi uh, Kaundinya, then David Gunkal, of course Bhupeshji was also there. Uh, I take this opportunity to thank them for their inputs and their contributions in the deliberations. The third session, I, of course, Metaverse was very interesting, which I have, which, uh, as I came to know. Um, there was <coughs> Sri Bhaskar Mandapati, then Anurag Bharadwaji, and also we had uh, Professor Athanu Rekshit. <coughs> So that was a very, uh, you know, very interesting and very brainstorming session that the, the feedback which I got, uh, very good. So my sincere thanks to all of them. And all the three sessions were uh, moderated by very dynamic persons. Uh, Professor uh, Kishu Daswani, Dr. Sapril Bangali and as well as Advocate Priyanka Pandilji. So actually uh, I must thank them um, for their kindness and for the moderating the sessions. Now, <coughs> today's chief guest, I, I don't have words to uh, thank him uh, and also, he is also part of uh, our partnering institution. So we are in fact blessed with his presence. Thank you very much sir for being with us. Thank you. But at the same time, uh, I have to mention certain uh, people and especially thank them. Uh, first one is Dr. Garima Pal, who had been very instrumental and supportive in this, in arranging this program. Similarly, uh, uh, Ms. Asta Tiwari, uh, she, she was pioneer in organizing this event and supported by our uh, members of the staff. Uh, Pooja Kulkarni, Manohar, Manohar uh, Karatmal for technical things and Prashant Duranta, uh, Kalida, Sandi, uh, Suraj and uh, Sajid, our ascendant sir, they were also very, very supportive. And all my uh, faculty uh, colleagues, uh, in the morning there was uh, uh, Milin Gavai person here, then now Aditya Tiwari, 
third party then <laughs> uh, then abhijit bore and aman khare and see this program would not have been uh, a success unless it was supported by our student volunteers so i cannot <coughs> name every one of them but a few names i would like to take and thank them uh, in person that is vedan uh, then riddhi aishwarya who had been comparing the this uh, this uh, session this stage in fact akshar arjun then kinza then saad nishchay and if i have missed out anybody pardon me maybe an accidental omission so my sincere thanks to all of you and uh, another special thanks to dada movies who has captured all moment every moments timely and untimely also sometimes <laughs> but but uh, it is added charm for this session and yeah <laughs> yes artificial intelligence <laughs> then thanks at the peak is to each one of you for being with us wasting a otherwise a holiday and getting enriched by the deliberations and your support and your presence gives us the strength to take things further and also to organize similar programs in future i think uh, anand raut sir and garima pal madam will take initiative in organizing similar programs uh, in the coming months also so once again thank each one of you for your all your support and cooperation thank you thank you mohan mohanti and nirbha ah yes siddhan okay. and nirbha okay. i i miss them sorry yes. sorry that uh, i missed their names so special thanks to you thank you